Previously on My Hero Academia. Just another normal day <laughs> in this world. Is this due to a series of accidents, or have villains taken the streets? Currently, yeah. we have no info on the situation here. Bird villains, mostly. Look. At what? Right there. There's How did she see that? <laughs> what the hell? Does she have a quirk? She's like, right there, stupid. <laughs> 40 miles away. <laughs> on that rooftop. Duh. Shigaraki's an itchy boy. Still, with the results, Tomura Shigaraki. Depends on tomorrow's headlines, moron. So angsty, so teen. Is he a teen? How old is he? This is anime, so you never know. He could be eleven, for all I know. Just beginning his puberty phase. <laughs> He could be like the cool, the cool senpai who dropped out. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying anymore. Just couldn't quite cut it in school for some reason. I mean, he almost made it to graduation, but senior year, something, something just snapped. He became disillusioned with authority. Or he could be 35. <laughs> who knows? The aftermath of Hero Killer Stain. Yeah, the aftermath is that all these kids are just amazingly powerful and great people. Thinking about that fight. Now, these three are a crew now, forevermore. Amazing. Seems to me he let us both live on purpose. I'm impressed by you, though, Ida. He was actually trying to murder you, but you stood <laughs> That's not true. You put that so bluntly. You've got a visitor. Huh? <gasps> this is Hosu's chief oh. of police. I like him already. No, he had me at dog. Woof. No, <laughs> so, you're the UA students who brought down yep. the hero killer. My, uh... Huh? My enjoyment of him only goes up over these few passing seconds. Right now, he's in the hospital under strict guard. Woof. <laughs> this is great. That's when heroes came in. They could do what we couldn't, if they were licensed, of course. Woof. It would be impossible for the police to condone the use of deadly quirks. None of you have the authority to harm the villain. That means the three of you. And your supervisors, oh, oh. Endeavor, Manuel, and Gran Torino, sure to receive harsh punishments for this gross abuse of your powers. Oh, what? This is not what I was expecting at all. I thought this was going to be pats on the backs and woofs all around. I get it up to a point, like with all these different quirks, with varying levels of, of danger and risk to others, you got to have some limits on that. Right? But are there no, like, self-defense clauses? You know what I mean? They didn't, like, go out of their way to attack Stain. They totally fooled me with this dog detective thing. I thought we were gonna have a, you know, great, heartwarming, wolf-filled scene, but suddenly we're enemies of the government? That's- this is interesting. Is this why All Might steered clear? <laughs> so it's okay to break the law as long as it goes your way. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. But sir, isn't it a hero's job to save people? This is why you're not a full-fledged pro yet. You damn mutt! Todoroki! Oh, wow. This is turning into, like, Captain America Civil War. <laughs> Any punishment would only be necessary if this went public. Oh? We could say Endeavor saved the day. Stains Burns would support their story completely, and we could pretend you weren't involved. Woof. Thankfully, there were very few witnesses. You'd receive no acclaim at all. Easy choice, no? I mean, I don't think any of these three really care about their, their image right now. I'm sorry. I should have listened. Yeah, you caused us a there lot you go. of trouble. There you go. Lay down the hammer. Remember that and don't do it again. He's such a good guy, this manual hero, normal guy. I know it's not fair. You won't enjoy any of the fame and praise you probably would have received. Oh, thank God. I really want to like this guy. <laughs> Allow me, as the chief of police, to thank you. Okay, he has some heart. A little bit of a fake out there. You know, you could have started with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But the implications of that battle would continue to eat at us. Even after our wounds had healed. So Wolfman didn't actually end up really believing this, it seems. He's not that convicted in just like the law is the law. But my first instinct when he was talking was, there, you know, there is something to that. It's difficult to find a balance because the law is not the point, right? The point is like aiming at a clear set of rules that allows society to function properly and function where people can live without constant impending doom. And it can also lead like constructive lives that benefit others, things like that, you know? But obviously the problem is that life is so complex, you can't boil down the nuances of every situation to just like hard and fast rules. So you put rules in place that are like your best estimation of what works when when broadly applied but then it gets really complicated because some people will attach too heavily to those rules and think that the laws are the point and that obeying laws is what makes you good when really the laws are sort of like secondhand 
for the goodness itself. There are people who really strongly identify with the law as like the ultimate virtue, so much so that they wish harm to befall those who do not comply. There can be a real like dark attachment to that. But on the other side, there's this temptation to think that I myself, you know, I as an individual am exempt from laws. They don't apply to me because I am good or because I am smart, etc. And I know it's best. And that is often true, but it doesn't work when widely applied. Because while everyone feels like they're a good judge of what's right and wrong, not everyone is a good judge of what's right and wrong. About this scene, it's satisfying to me because actually something like a good conclusion was reached. Like clearly the kids have learned their lesson. They came to an understanding, hopefully things improve from here on out. You know, and actually I think that's a pretty good argument for how to solve some of the, the problems of like laws being too overreaching is to keep situations as local as possible. And then taking this to a crazy level that's like way outside the scope of the show or the law, that's a pattern you see repeating in nature. Large systems tend to be stronger and more resilient when failure is localized. An example of that would be like a species, you know, individuals die, but actually individual death in a way can actually make the species stronger. What would be dangerous for the species is like one event or one potential vulnerability, the whole species fails, right? It's like that top down thing creates more risk than that bottom up failure thing. But yeah, that was a lot a lot to say based on uh, a character who says woof at the end of every sentence. Whoa, they arrested the hero killer. Awesome. Seriously? Who took him down? Endeavor. Just what you'd expect from the number two hero. I mean, he didn't exactly take down Stain, but he does deserve some credit for this event. He like destroyed all these nomus. Based on their distinctive appearance, however, and the presence of two Oh no, this League of Villains nearby. name is going to catch on, isn't it? That's unfortunate. <laughs> Don't praise him. That would be praise to him. We're back talking about the criminal who has surely left his mark on Japan, if not the world. Are these all villains that are listening to this broadcast? Yeah, my first thought was like, what if this inspires them or breeds copycats or something? <laughs> Once this night is over, the world will have forgotten you ever existed. That didn't happen. Not only have they not forgotten, but we didn't even make the front page. Womp womp. Yeah, it, there is something to that, right? Didn't he just create a challenge the for villains to try to surpass him? Oh, there look who it is! Incidents with villains who resembled Nomu from the UA attack. You're likely worried how this all stitches together. Hey, I see what you did there. <laughs> People tend to come apart at the seams in times like this. Yes, yes. Give me these <laughs> clothing puns. We're here to protect others, not seek out vengeance. Look at him! Look at him with his hair. May your minds and bodies be as sharp as your genes. Thank you, best genist! Damn it. Thank you, best genist. I'm so ready to get out of this place. No, no. You look so good, though. <laughs> no matter how damaged your hair is, <laughs> our new formula is sure to I feel like I would enjoy this internship. I don't know, you learn a lot, no? This is just the first cut, so it'll be another month before it airs. It needs lots of CGI. CGI? How about we go patrol? <gasps> Patrol this hair salon, am I right? It's all useful. You know, you may as well try to enjoy it. I think I mentioned in a previous internship episode that I went to a sort of unorthodox high school towards the end where I did internships for credit. One of the internships I did was I thought it would be cool to learn how to cook and be a chef. So I signed up for a kitchen. And in my head, it's all grilling steaks and flambéing bananas and whatever chefs do. I mean, you can see I learned nothing. <laughs> because on my first day, what I did was chop a lot of onions. Like I chopped a lot of onions. More onions than anyone should ever have to chop in a single day. And my second day never happens because I quit. <laughs> but the takeaway from that was kitchen, not my thing. And so I was able to move on having struck something off the list. And you know, that has value too. These girls, I feel like they're gonna do even better than me because at least they're gonna have great hair. <laughs> my mundane life experiences aside, maybe a more interesting principle is that like experience is sort of the ultimate giver, you know, like you just do so much more for yourself being out there and trying new things, even if they're terrible, then you do like waiting and looking around for the optimal thing. That idea, or maybe it's just an instinct, is one of the things I value the most highly in myself because it's taken me basically everywhere that I value. It's just me like, let me jump into this thing and well, that didn't work out, but now I'm a little bit ahead because I'm fine tuning myself and my own tastes and also growing, you know, like challenge makes you grow. And that incidentally is like, one of the big parts of the hero's journey. It's getting out there. To me, greatness or refinement is like, it's two parts. It's you and reality and where they meet and like how you adapt to that. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> you guys are okay. Don't worry, sounds like you went through a lot. Oh, did they ever. I'll see you back at school. I hope I didn't Gotta go kill. you much. See you later. Was that a boy? <laughs> um, yeah, it's not like that. It sort of is like that. Dude, you like talk to her all the time. Still? Uh, oh, that was a little weird. All right, Deku. He legit like spends every day with her in school. Ida just got his test results back. Test results? My left hand might have damage that's permanent. Eh, could be worse. <laughs> Look, 
this is just part of the gig. Anyone who does physical things just has lasting injuries. They're literally fighting for their lives, so it just feels like something you gotta accept. I mean, Deku literally, like, his whole quirk so far has has relied on him destroying himself, so how much physical longevity do you expect? Anyway, Ida's a legs guy. I refuse to be upset. I'm not in that kind of mood today. <laughs> I'll have trouble moving my fingers, and my hand might have some numbness. Oh no, that's pretty bad. Damn it, Ida. I stopped thinking rationally. The first thing I should have done was call Manuel, but I got lost in my own anger. Yeah, blinded by revenge and all that. Blinded by a selfish desire for revenge. You're about yeah. as far <laughs> from being a hero as I can imagine. Nah, it's closer than you think. If I'd been a better friend back then. No, stop it. Yes, exactly. I've already accepted what happened. Yes. It would be selfish to make this about me. Wow, good for you, Deku. I love that. Just do what you can for now. My hand is a reminder too. Yep. Let's get stronger. Together. Yes, this feels so much better than like, oh, I'm sorry, you're sorry, we're all terrible. Come on, enter the fist bump. <laughs> it's something wrong with me. No, we were doing so good there. Join the fist bump. <laughs> Todoroki, I didn't know you had a sense of humor. Interesting. A phone call is here. A phone call is here. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god, that's amazing. I need that. You can't possibly be serious with that ringtone. I'm 100% serious that I need that ringtone. <laughs> can't believe he was able to frighten someone like you, Gran Torino. He must have already been tied up, so what scared you? It probably stemmed from his fanatic ideology. His conviction. To put it simply, you've both got charisma. As the investigation continues, his ideology and opinions will be all over the media. Everyone yeah, will want to yeah. know his motives. Right. If that's true, and he inspires copycat villains, they'll probably that was my strike too, yeah. on their own. In his way, he was successful. The League will go from being thought of as a bunch of juvenile delinquents that attacked UA, to being recognized as a group with an ideology. And they can maybe ride this momentum and recruit. If that evil gathers under one banner, it will swell to unstoppable proportions. Yeah, the tipping point happens faster than you might think, too. Doesn't take that many people. Interesting. They're, like, growing. They've been busy. You're concerned it could be the man killed Shimura, my sworn friend, your master and the previous holder of one for all. There's the history. The man who opened that hole in your stomach. You're afraid the villain named All for One is on the rise again. All for One? You should find the time to tell him everything concerning you. And yes, please do. I would also honest, like to know. He deserves to know the truth. Definitely. And I deserve to know the truth. And speaking of conviction, everything's been going well for All Might. Well, that's not exactly true, but generally speaking, the the world he lives in is peaceful. But for the, the villain, if it is the guy that he's battled before, that person has probably been living in extreme passion and hatred this whole time and has been preparing in that state. And it feels like we're uncovering it like a little bit too late. There's already a lot of momentum. And yeah, fanaticism is powerful. Everybody needs something to believe in, I think. And in the absence of a strong belief, we're sort of like targets for people who will give us beliefs. And one thing we're wired to look for is passion and conviction. And one way people are often converted to a certain side and become passionate about that side is through the pulling of emotions based on things that are actually legitimate concerns or complaints. And there are a lot of legitimate concerns and complaints about heroes. But then what happens is once people are converted to that side, it often then becomes a binary thing of like me and the enemy. People who do not understand this are evil. And then you can justify all sorts of things in the name of like fighting back against that. And people who are convicted like this, people who are passionate and charismatic are very aware of that and use that very effectively. Two days after the Hosu incident, the hero killer's identity and motives started being dissected from various angles. Although Stain, I think, is actually convicted. He's not faking it to recruit people. It just turned out that way. Man, I missed the days before All Might. And I was still small time back then. Remember when villains were wild and impulsive? Everyone thought they could take over the world. It was a real good time. <laughs> I bet it was. Maybe it's time for me to finally call it quits. Don't be rash. Listen. I feel like there's Just about to be an uptick me, in crime and villainy. I know of a way to make some real cash. Have you seen this yet? Huh? What's that? It's a video of the hero killer. He's hot right now. He's so hot right now. <laughs> Throughout his teenage years, Chizume advocated for a return to the early days of heroes, but quickly realized that words had no power. For the next 10 years, he trained in killing techniques in order to fulfill his self-appointed duty. Yeah, not at all a huge leap there between, you know, talking and, like, killing everyone. He believed heroes should not seek compensation. 
Mm. That one should keep it pure. The idea of self sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I get that. There is a complication there, but I don't think it has to be mutually exclusive. He hoped society would eventually side with him. These streets must run with the blood of hypocrites. And how do I make money off of this exactly? All might is worthy. Does All Might not make money? Doesn't he have merch? This keeps getting uploaded and immediately taken down online. But they can't stop it. Yeah, that might even make it worse. The Barber Streisand effect, I think it's called. So I get the money thing being a complicator because if we have people who are in important positions, we sort of need to believe or want to believe that they are doing it for the right reasons and that they are pure of heart. And that's important because if they have the wrong motivations, they can easily use that power and flip it on everyone in a way that's terrible. So if someone is in that position and receives nothing for it, that's about as good a signal that you can get that their motivations are just about doing that thing well. Now, that doesn't mean that getting money for it means they're motivations are not pure. It's just that with the money, with the earning of some other benefit, an outside observer can't be sure without directly knowing the person what the extent of their motivations are. So it's not that you can't be pure of heart and can't do great things and receive compensation. It's that with limited information, the separate incentives for doing a thing obfuscate the person's motives, which can create anxiety for onlookers who rely on that person to do certain things. My issue with Stain is like the escalation. It's like, yeah, okay, I, I sort of get he wants a more pure form of heroism. But then it's like a big leap to be like, well, the solution to this is just killing everyone for these these minor transgressions, you know? I don't know. This has come up in both shows recently. I think there's this idea that because someone puts forth a logical argument for something, that means they are like thinking clearly about it and are unemotional. When in reality, a lot of the time, what happens is someone feels very emotional about something, but realize that their emotion is transparent. And so they construct the most logical argument they can to convince others. And like I said earlier, one means to people's hearts is by getting at some truth that people already know, and then using that as like a sort of Trojan horse for your emotion about that, to get them riled up, to get them on your side. So for me, Stain isn't like this super code-based, you know, I'm very rational, I'm thinking about what's best for the world, clearly thinker. To me, he seems bitter, he seems outraged. And so what we hear from him about like, what's best for the world, what's best for, for heroism, is something of a story, even though I think he himself believes that. It's not the whole thing. It's not hard to see. This guy is really stirring something in people. He's provocative, <laughs> gets the people moving. <laughs> I don't think the heroes realize what's awakening. This girl looks like a barrel of laughs. They're all headed to the League of Villains. So we got the, the UA class, and then looks like we're going to have a villain class. Interesting. Cool, I'm excited to get to know a new, new class. <laughs> new class of people. Oh god, I'm going to regret this. So I really like how they're keeping this going. It felt like a pretty hard ending last episode, but this episode does a great job sort of picking that up and showing that that was in a way a setup. So things keep building. I feel like a lot of the dilemmas of the society are like being brought up to the surface now by the villains, which is kind of cool because this is a complicated world and it does have a parallel in real life. So as what I'd say was, you know, largely a setup episode, it's really fun. It did a really great job. And I absolutely love the scene, the hospital scene or the hospital interactions, I sh should say, with the three kids, with Ida, Midoriya, and Todoroki. I feel so much camaraderie from them. It's great. Is it me or did they just become a crew? You know, did they just become a trio? They've been through something pretty amazing together. All right, but that's the end of this episode. I got to go change my ringtone to a phone call is here. A phone call is here.